Welcome to Critter Crusades, the show about ordinary people on extraordinary missions to help animals. My guest today is Sabina Bradley Phillips, sort of a reptisitter, we would call her. She's very involved with the reptile world. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Well, I know you have so many stars here in our studio, and I have to just look right away at this most gorgeous creature, and this is Lola. Tell me more about Lola. Lola is uh, about four and a half year old iguana. And uh, a typical green iguana, probably from somewhere in uh, Central America, which is where they are bred on farms. Mm -hmm. And they're commonly sold no, downtown. Um, downtown on pet shops, and people can buy them for like 10 or $20. And um, what people don't know is that these animals are high maintenance. It's mm -hmm. like having a three-year-old in your house the whole time because they, they become very smart. And they need um, special lights, and they need good food, and they need sunshine, and they need a lot of things to grow. Um, Lola is four and a half year old, and this iguana is four and a half year old. And the difference why this little girl is so small is because her owners did not know about ultraviolet light. They did not know about the proper food that they should be getting. Mm -hmm. um, an animal can only grow as much as the bones grow. When the, when the bones cannot grow because there's no calcium, the animal will be dwarfed. This, she was near death and a, a week ago when our owners contacted me because they didn't know what was wrong with her. And wow. um, it wasn't until I talked to her owner about, do you have a ultraviolet light? You know, does she ever get out into the sun? What do you feed her? That I figured out what was wrong with her. And when you, can, when you look closely, you will actually see her knees being swollen, which is typical for calcium deficiency. So just like uh, we do, mm -hmm. and most other animals do, they need special ultraviolet lights like these that you can buy in the pet trade mm -hmm. um, to uh, metabolize vitamin D to be able to absorb the calcium and put it into their bones. So these are creatures, these iguanas live in very hot Area, do they, are they in hot, humid areas? Hot, or? humid areas. Hot, they live humid in areas. rainforest or um, forested areas. There has to be water present and there has to be an abundance of vegetation present because they are foliophores, which means they, leave, they eat mainly leaves, mm -hmm. flowers, some fruit. Occasionally, I mean, they are opportunistic. They, they will eat an occasional insect or baby bird if they mm -hmm. come across it. But more than 90% or 95% of their food is plants. Right. So backing up a little bit, how did you get involved with reptiles? Uh, a long time ago, I got my first iguana. And uh, from there, I went to the first reptile shows. And uh, then I took in some turtles that I wanted to rescue. And, and it, it just snowboarded from there. What and made you want to rescue them? Because I see a lot of very sick animals that um, a lot of people simply don't know how to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And um, so I try to spread information about that to um, help as many as I can. Now, uh, you're from Germany, correct? Yes. It's not a, a country that is probably very warm most of the time. That would, Do you have many reptiles in that country? Actually, the, uh, the, the uh, German um, vivarium, that's what you call it in Germany, uh, or terroristic, uh, friends, they are very tightly organized. Mm. Um, unlike here, it's a it's a very it's a national organization uh, that people can join in, and um, they have um, different laws than here. And as much as two years ago, Germany actually adopted into the constitution that vertebrate animals have certain rights. Wonderful. I know so many people that come from Germany that are uh, here in Los Angeles that are doing rescue, and they said it's unheard of. Somebody would give up their Mercedes or their whatever right. before they would ever even take an animal to a pound. It yeah. is no kill. They absolutely focus on that. And, and it's so wonderful when you hear that the country really as a, as a group believes in the humanity. Well, they are, it's not that they are, they are uh, dogs and cats usually stay in the shelters only a certain time and then they will be euthanized because of rabies. Oh, okay. So an animal that is uh, not verified that it has been uh, vaccinated against rabies, they will euthanize them. So mm -hmm. it just um, seems that some places are a little bit more progressive than right. others. So you have a lot of different uh, fellows here that are um, joining us. I see a little group here of. Uh, well, they were here a moment ago, and now all of a sudden they're hidden. There were some well, turtles. Well, I have a tortoise, a 
baby tortoise and I have a baby turtle. What's the difference between a tortoise and a turtle? Well, that's in the American language. We make a difference between um, turtles, which have, they are more affiliated with water, mm -hmm. and they have functioning feet. Yeah. They have actual little toes, whereas tortoises just have like little stompers. They don't have actual feet, and they are usually oh. from more arid settings, and they can't swim. They would Tortoises sink. cannot swim. They cannot swim. They sink like a, like, a, like a stone. But turtles can. But turtles can. And I knew, I grew up with what they call snapping turtles. Mm -hmm. What is a snapping turtle? Snapping turtles are aquatic turtles. They uh, are very rugged, um, live in uh, more like the eastern seaboard of the United States. Mm -hmm. In fact, the alligator snapping turtle is one of the largest freshwater turtles in the world. The alligator? The alligator snapping turtle. Why do they call it that? There's two snapping turtles. You've got the common snapping turtle and you've got the alligator snapping turtle. Mm -hmm. And the, the bigger one is the alligator snapping turtle. They are the ones that have the little lure on their tongues and they mm -hmm. have these rugged shell. Mm -hmm. In fact, the shell of a turtle, this, the top part is called the carapace and the bottom part is called the plastron. And um, the shell is made of bone, actually. Mm. And so it feels pain, and it bleeds, and it behaves like bone. So when you scratch a, a, turtle, a, a turtle, it will feel bleed. it. Oh, yes, absolutely. That, to me, is it's fascinating, because you think of this shell, and people think, oh, the turtle goes in its shell, it's completely protected. Mm. They can actually be injured. Oh, raccoons, in for instance, um, very commonly uh, uh, will take turtles and just chew them up. I see a lot of times. When people have, for instance, dogs and turtles, mm -hmm. or dogs and tortoises, um, if the turtle is smaller, the dog, all the dog has to do is just puncture the plastron because as the turtle grows, the plastron, or the, it's made of different scoots, mm -hmm. and it grows by basically growing a new layer around each scoot, and that part is soft. Mm -hmm. And so when a, when, a, when a predator takes the turtle into its mouth, all it's got to do is just puncture at these growth lines Mm. and would be able to get into the turtle. Now, how big are these guys going to grow? Uh, Greek tortoises grow to about like the, si the size, like 10 inches maximum, mm -hmm. 8 to 10 inches. Box turtles are small. They, uh, the biggest subspecies of um, box turtles are the Gulf Coast box turtles, and they grow to maximum about 8 inches. Mm -hmm. So the average box turtle is, if you hand me one of the adults, it right. gives you more an idea. I'm going to be looking down in this box <laughs> for a turtle. Whoa! Let's I just it. found one. He's a box okay, turtle. I found a turtle, but I didn't Absolutely I wasn't ready for it at that yep. moment. So that's actually the dad of this one. Oh. Yes, that's You've got actually families. the dad. Yeah. So that's that's the dad and that's the baby. And so that's pretty much that's the three toed box turtles. That's pretty much as big as they get. They don't get very big. They're and what's small. the coloration on this one? Does that uh, does that's it a male. that it's a male? Yeah, and sometimes I know, like in peacocks, the male is more vibrant, the female is less. But in some species, is the female more vibrant than the male? Or and uh, turtles usually the male is more vibrant, mm -hmm. and uh, box turtles especially have a great variation of colorations of what they look like. Their shells can be dark, can be light, can have spots on it. Now I watched um, you. You were scratching his. You were scratching a little bit. Does he feel that? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. That's fascinating. What what sort of reaction does that do for for turtles? Is it is it a comforting? Is it something they would do in the wild? Would they rub up against something sometimes? Well, some turtles actually, for instance, aquatic turtles. When you scratch them like that, they will actually start to sort of shift around and dance and lift their butts and stuff. And so it's, <laughs> it's pretty cute. Um, I know, for instance, of some big tortoises when they're being water down with the hose, they would do the same thing, they would do the sort of shifting. Now, the one so that has yeah. more color on the back, I thought that was the, um, the male here. Let me just grab this one. I thought, I thought this was the male. No, that's a different subspecies. Oh. So this is a three-toed okay. box turtle. They occur in um, anywhere from like um, Oklahoma, Kansas, that's where mm -hmm. you find these guys. And then Kansas and more west you will have the ornate box turtle. Mm -hmm. And uh, these guys actually have evolved with the buffalo herds. And oh. that they used to go to the dung piles and dig up the dung piles and eat the dung beetles. So that was their speciality. So these guys love to eat beetles and bugs and creepy crawlies. And um, so they come from the more arid western. And then mm -hmm. the furthest west, you would have the desert box turtle which I don't have one with me, but they exist. And so the other difference that you see is the shells are different form. This one is more round. 
Mm -hmm. And this one is flattened. Right. It has a it has a dome. Yep. And this one is flat, but this one is not aquatic. No, both this, are not aquatic. These are both are not aquatic. So, does the coloration help in what area they're yes. located in, as far as hiding them from other yep. predators or anything yep. like that? So that's something that they have. If you put this girl in among dry grass, she would literally disappear in front of your eyes. Just right. blend in. Right. You know, so. Right. What are their predators? Raccoons, uh, humans. Well, At the yes. moment, the majority get killed f by human intervention simply mm -hmm. because they cannot live in malls or on freeways. Mm -hmm. So habitat destruction is a big thing. People make it a sport to run them over. Um, mm -hmm. And it's usually, especially the females that are looking for nesting sites, um, that got run over, that means not only did that particular female get killed, but all the eggs in her too, mm -hmm. and future generations. Mm -hmm. um, so pet trade is a big thing. The majority of box turtles that you see in the pet trade are wild caught. Uh -huh. So you have a little box turtle that was living in its little patch for years and years. It knew where to find the bugs and the fruit and mm -hmm. whatnot, and was just taken away. <laughs> and uh, shipped away with hundreds of others and in filthy conditions often enough. And um, so one way to stop this is to not buy turtles or tortoises in the pet trade, but to adopt right. or buy from a re reputable breeder. Mm -hmm. And now you Simple. do rescue of turtles as well as any iguanas reptiles. or any kind of reptile. Mm -hmm. All right, we have some other reptiles that are visiting us. This, I thought, was a snake. Now, mm -hmm. what is this? This is a plated lizard from Africa. They, are, they come into the pet trade very commonly. Uh, let me see if I can actually, because he's going to just jump out. Oh, there we go. And he actually lost his tail because I did a big mistake. I adopted him out. And mm. that person did not take care of him. As you can see, he doesn't like being held. And uh, he lost his beautiful long tail, and you can see it grew back, but it never grows back the same as it was before. Hmm. And the reason why I like to take him out when I do education is because, according to newest DNA study, snakes have probably evolved from lizards like that, mm -hmm. which are called the anguids. There we go. Which are called the anguids. Um, that's a certain class of, of lizards. And you can mm -hmm. see on the side, he's got a fold. Mm -hmm. You have a, a lizard species here in California that looks very much like that. They're called alligator lizards. And you okay. find them in your backyards. Mm -hmm. And they're very good critters to have around because they're very good natural pest control. Oh, okay. The people do the mistake. They go out with all these poisons to get rid of the pest. What happens is the insects adapt to the poisons much faster. And you kill the predators that would be eating those insects. And so actually you make the problem worse. And where is he or she native of? Uh, East Africa. How would something like this get to the United States? Shipped. And legally or illegally? It, we have uh, the Convention of um, a Protection of Species, or CITES. Um, as far as I know, these animals are not on the CITES list. Uh, every country puts animals on there, or is an international symposium that puts them on there. Um, that depends on the numbers, how they're found. Um, what biologists or fi field um, researchers find. If an, uh, there, there's once the possibility that some animals are still common, but there is habitat loss, and so they're, they're put on CITES, and there's three grades, it's one, two, three. And when an animal is put on one, it can still be traded, but only in certain numbers, and you need papers for it. Uh, until you reach three, where virtually the trade in these animals or parts of that animal are absolutely forbidden. Mm -hmm. Uh, animals that are on there, for instance, or sea turtles um, that cannot be traded, either as parts or in the whole life animal. It's absolutely not legal. So that looks like a snake. Yes. Do you deal with snakes? Yes, I actually have a snake. And I have one. Why did snake. I ask that question? I just <laughs> knew you would have a snake for some reason. Actually, um, snakes have this reputation that is totally not deserved. This guy. Not is, and I have to watch Lola because Lola doesn't like snakes. This guy is the absolute most peaceful critter there is. He is um, a beautiful serpent. I've had him since he was the size of a pencil. What type? That's a ball python. 
or royal python. They are again from Africa and they're oh, being imported gorgeous. in large numbers. They don't get big. The females get bigger than the males. They get to about six feet. The and they belong skin, to the smaller python species. The skin feels, it doesn't feel real. It feels like you're feeling something fake, but you feel life in it. I can't explain it, but it is such a gorgeous, it look, it's luminescent. It looks like it's wet, yeah. but it's not wet. No. And are these the type that grow to be so large that they strangle? No. That you see in the movies, oh, they, right. somebody's come up and they've been strangled by a python or they've swallowed a baby boy or something. I hear Well, these, these are these are boy pythons. They grow to, like I said, the maximum would be like six feet for the and females. What is this underneath? Is That's that how we actually, when you look underneath, that is actually how he moves. It helps him in this locomotion. And That's part of the slithering process. Yeah, those are. The, he's got muscles underneath here, and so he this, those big belly scales help him grip the ground easier. So, what does a snake like this eat? Uh, small rodents. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do actually, I do not like the the uh, feeding of live rodents. Right. I am um, absolutely against it for one reason. When you look at his side, you will see scars. In fact, a lot of snakes oh. get killed by their prey because the, the, the mouse or the, especially rats will actually go into the defense and, and disembowel the, the snake or just chew its face off. I've seen that many times. Many snakes have lost their eyesight Wow! because the rat just simply chewed You always face think off. of the snake as the predator and has no, nothing to worry about. I grew up with, uh, in Texas with rattlesnakes. Of course, you've got to... Mm -hmm. You've got a warning. They give you the rattle or whatever. Something like this is, is benign. Uh, chicken snakes, I know, are benign. There's lots mm -hmm. of snakes that are benign, and people love snakes because of their beauty. Um, they're just a, a symbol of, of so many interesting things throughout history, but looking at this, it's just it's constantly moving. What sort of exercise do they need? I mean, people they may... Don't. <laughs> they, they don't. They don't. Um, a snake's life is pretty much it will go out and hunt... It will eat, and then it takes it a week or two to digest it. And during the digestion process, it doesn't want to be bothered. Oh, so, so you can keep a, a snake in a sweater box like this, and it's going to be perfectly happy. Now and then, when he starts to move, I know he's hungry, and I take him out, and I just let him move around a little bit until mm -hmm. I feed him. And once he's fed, he goes back into his box, and he'll just sleep in there. And how, how often do you feed, feed him? Uh, once every week or 10 days. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So because they, reptiles are very um, sufficient with their energies, um, especially snakes. They have evolved in a way they don't need much to eat. Hmm. That's a generalization because there are some snakes, like for instance, indigo snakes. If you are from Texas, you know, indigo snakes, they eat a lot. Mm -hmm. They like to eat. They have a fast metabolism. Uh, racers, mm -hmm. for instance, have a fast metabolism. But these guys, they belong to the primitive snakes too, uh, pythons and boas, because they still have remnants of their legs. When you look here, you, f you see the little, those little things, they are spores, called spores, and they are actually the remnants of legs. They so have, would they have, it's what you're talking about with this, this would have evolved into, into some this. sort of snake that it didn't have a need for the right. legs anymore, so those exactly. left the body. Yeah. Now, as far as the tongue coming out like this, is that sensing? Is yes. that a sensing mechanism? Yeah, they have, um, you know, when you got a cold, you've got a problem even tasting your food. Mm -hmm. Now, in reptiles, the sense of taste and smell is the one. Mm -hmm. And what he does is he picks up with his tongue uh, molecules in the air, and in the roof of his mouth, he has a little pit that's called the Jacobson's organ. Mm -hmm. And he will actually deposit those molecules that he's picked up in that pit, and it goes right to the brain and analyzes what he has picked up. And the tongue is forked, so he knows which direction it came from. Oh, fascinating. So it's, um, if you open, if I would uh, open, for instance, her mouth or any, you would see two gro deep grooves in the mm -hmm. roof of the, of the mouth. And that's, that's what it is. It's the Jacobson's organ. Now we have the iguanas, the lizards, the snakes, the turtles. And now we have another friend that's up to my right side. <laughs> and um, tell us a little bit before we, uh, we can look at her, him, him, him. Now, who is he? He's that's that's a veiled chameleon. Uh, they come from the Arabian Peninsula, from Yemen. And um, again, they've been imported in huge numbers. Um, I had 
actually Melly was an interesting story because his mother was a rescue um, and she didn't make it. So when she died, we actually took the eggs out of her because we didn't want the eggs to die with her. And I incubated the eggs and um, most of the eggs did not make it. He was actually the only one that hatched, that made it from about 50 eggs. And it took nine months to incubate because wow. chimerian eggs take a long time to incubate. So and he was like the size of a fingernail when he hatched. He was so tiny. He has, it looks almost like uh, grasping mm -hmm. types of claws, not claws, but what are they? Are they claws? Are they're claws. What happens is they fuse. So there's two in the front and three in the back and they fuse like this. That way he can hold on to a branch. You could basically turn that tree upside down and he would still hold on. And his eyes are very independent. They're going mm -hmm. in different directions. How how is that worked working, and why does that why does he need to do that? Right, so he can see. Oh, that is an example. Oh, there it he shows, goes. It shows you a oh, that look at the that. color that a chameleon has has got nothing to do with the background. It's they um, react to emotions, and uh, they will show stress, for instance, or temperature, or their well-being through the color. And the other thing is that they're absolutely solitary animals. They do not allow another chameleon in their premises at all. He, he's he's now has a lot of the blue colors and yellow and and black. And before yellow he was and black more green. was stress. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're actually the colors have a, a reason. Yes. Just like octopi, you know, octopi change their color and they communicate to each other about the emotional state, and uh, chameleons do the same thing. Uh, will he go to other colors besides those, or is that pretty much his tone? Did they turn he can reds turn or completely black when he is really stressed. When something really, really scared him, he will turn completely black. And he will turn like black and white completely. Now, will weather conditions affect him Absolutely. changing colors? All, uh, nearly all reptiles are affected by temperature, mm -hmm. um, stress level. Um, for instance, um, these guys will turn very dark when they are either sick, stressed, in pain, um, he's, cold. He's now gotten so small. He was looking huge. Yeah. He was, was, is there air that goes out no, his body? No, what it is, he, he actually adopts his, his, bo his own body shape. Their, their ribs are not hard and fused like ours. Their ribs are, can expand. So what he did was basically just make himself tall. And if you would have looked at him from above, you would have seen that he was really thin, like an upright walking pancake, basically. So it's just optical illusion. He just makes himself really look really big. So the word chameleon will have a different meaning for all of us now. That's really fascinating. And do they fight with each other? Absolutely. With to the death. To the death. If, if one of them does not give up and retreat, they will tear each other apart. By the way, the same goes for male iguanas. You cannot keep two male iguanas in the same room. Once they're sexually mature, they will fight. Um, how, how, did these, how did these breed? The it's female only allows the male close if she's close to uh, to her oestros when she's ready to lay eggs. Mm -hmm. And that's the, there's only like a frame of a couple of days when she will allow a male to be in her presence. So they will not fight. They will change heat. They will change only colors. In, only in that in that time frame. If you right. put a male and female together at any other time, they will still fight. Right. So these guys are hard to chameleons are for intermediate reptile keepers the veiled chameleons and then you have for instance the Jacksons and the, and the panther chameleons that are even harder to take care of and they are in my, my, in my opinion only for experienced people. So you have photos of what can happen to someone not just a chameleon I mean not just a, another <laughs> chameleon or another iguana what can actually happen as far as wounds that they can inflict. Well people always say that um, as soon as I say that an iguana is an herbivore, they say, well, it's, it's harmless. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, and this is what an herbivore can do to you, mm -hmm. um, especially the males. What we when, they grow, when they grow and, and, and become sexually mature, large male iguanas will start for two or three mm -hmm. months in a year. They, they, be, they go into, um, a, we call it the breeding blues, the breeding blahs, whatever. They change color, they become very orange, mm -hmm. and they will challenge their owners because they see us as fellow iguanas. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. which is part of the adaptation. That's how they got used to living with us. Mm -hmm. The downside is that he will treat us like another iguana, which means he will attack. And um, iguanas are very sharp teeth. They replace their teeth at all the time. Every second tooth is in replacement. And when you look at the chart, you can see that they have serrated teeth like sharks. Mm. And uh, they can, that slices through human flesh like butter. In these last moments, there's probably nonprofits people can look and learn more about Absolutely. these animals. What would be something if people are interested in tort uh, tortoises or turtles? What, where should they go for that? Where we have the, here in California, we got the California Turtle and Tortoise Club. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to go online, it's tortoise.org. Mm -hmm. uh, just check up your local chapter and just drop on in. They have regular meetings. Get in contact with somebody. Um, they have all the information online. And I guess the main thing is that people really need to be educated about Absolutely. any of these creatures. There's uh, no excuse nowadays. I hear that a lot as I didn't know and there's no excuse. The information is out there. You just Google whatever animal you're interested in, uh, preferably before you get it, right. so that you have everything ready. Uh, for Let's say for a normal diurnal lizard like an iguana, you need ultraviolet light, a heat light, a tank or cage of appropriate size. You cannot stick her in a little tank. Right. You know, um, you need to know about the food, the proper food preferences, humidity levels. Great. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us on Critic Crusades, a show about ordinary people on extraordinary missions. <laughs>